And our next speaker is Matthias Fink, professor of physics at the Ecole Supérieure de Physique et de Chimie Industrielle. Sorry for the Italian accent. And he'll be talking to us about multi-wave approach to elasticity imaging for cancer detection. Um, I just need to found. Um, yeah. Uh, good evening, and uh, thank you for this invitation, especially because uh, I come from the field of ultrasound, and uh, I think your, the community of photonics is very open because they proposed to a guy from ultrasound to speak here. Uh, of course, I will not speak only of ultrasound. I will speak of what we call multi-wave imaging, and uh, it is the idea that if you mix two kinds of waves, you can obtain a new image that has the contrast of one wave and the spatial resolution of the other wave. Uh, and in this case, uh, ultrasound is one of the very interesting waves to use. The other wave can be optical wave, shear wave, microwave. Uh, let us recall you that ultrasound imaging has a lot of success mainly because the ultrasonic speed is nearly uniform in soft tissue. And when you want to make an image with ultrasound, usually you use the piezoelectric transducer array. And because you know the speed of ultrasound, it is quite easy to focus ultrasound where you want. And uh, by putting some delay between each excitation pulse on this piezoelectric transducer, you can focus where you want. And typically, uh, the frequency we use can be of the order of 10 megahertz, giving you um, some uh, millimeter wavelength or even smaller. To make an image, usually you send a pulse and uh, you re recall the echo, and you send another pulse, and you continue, and this takes some time. And after, you have to change the focal depth, and you obtain new echo from other position, and all this takes some time. Uh, if you look the time it needs, taking into account the speed of ultrasound, it is typically 50 frames per second, which is not bad and you have a process that gives you good focusing because you focus both in transmit and receive, and it is the analog of scanning confocal microscopy, but this is for ultrasound. Now, one question is the following. Can we go faster than 50 frames per second? How to go faster? One way to do this is to use what we call a time reversal processor, and the idea is the following. You have an array of transducer, but you eliminated the medium just with one plane wave, pulsed plane wave, and you record all the echo. And all the echo, if you have as many analogic to digital converter that you have transducer, if you have a large electronic memory, you record all the echo. Once you have the echo, the echo is not the image. How to go from the echo to the image? One very easy solution is to use the time reversal processor that reverse the chronology of the echo and backpropagate the echo in the computer uh, in a medium which has the, sound, the speed of ultrasound. And you obtain an image. Now what is interesting is one shot is enough to make an image. And here, instead of playing scanning uh, confocal microscopy, you played pulsed holography, but you do the holo the reconstruction process in real time. And you obtain very high frame, typically 10,000 frames per second. We, divide, we, we made a first device in our lab, which was this big electronic desk, uh, which was based on a time reversal mirror that we have built for other purposes. And we begin to have ultra-fast imaging system in our lab. Later, uh, a company was created from our lab, 
And uh, this company uh, put on the market in 2009 this ultra-fast ultrasound scanner that gives you 10,000 frames per second. And since this time, many of these Explorer machines have been sold, mainly in the US and in other countries. Now, why it is interesting to have so many frames per second? It's very interesting because it allows you to observe another kind of wave that is usually not observed, which are called the shear wave that propagate in soft solid tissue. Usually, when you have a solid, you know that two kinds of waves can propagate, compressional wave and shear wave. What is the speed of these two waves? Compressional wave, it is like ultrasound, it depends of the bulk modulus, and the speed is quite high, typically 1,500 meters per second. And this is practically uniform for all soft tissue. But shear wave, they propagate at speed which is quite small, low, between 1 and 10 meters per second. And this depends, the speed of shear wave depends of the shear modulus of tissue. The shear modulus is very important. The way shear wave depends of shear modulus, is given by this equation. And what is important is that when you want to send shear wave in tissue, you can only send shear wave at sonic frequency. Maximum is one kilohertz, because if you go at higher frequency, the viscous uh, absorption will kill the shear wave. And shear wave depends on the shear modulus, which is quite small. It is very easy to apply the shear stress on tissue and to make deformation. And shear modulus is related to the palpation that the doctor field when he's making palpation for diagnosis of cancer, for example. The problem of shear wave is that the wavelength is quite big, centimeter. How to produce shear wave in tissue? One very elegant wave is to use the ultrasonic transducer array, but to focus ultrasound and sending long bursts. If you send long bursts, you create ultrasonic radiation force, that is a nonlinear effect, that push tissue. And you create locally a micro seism inside tissue. And when you push tissue, after a shear wave come from this focal point. Now, if you look all the chronology, during 20 milliseconds, which is very fast, you create a push, and after you go in ultra-fast imaging seconds. And what you obtain is a movie the speckle is moving when the, way, the shear wave moves, and you can track the speckle motion, and you see that you see the shear wave coming from this point. This is a very fast movie. The problem is that this shear wave comes from one point, and it decreases with the amplitude decrease. How to do better? You can send not only one push, but you can push at different depths, pushing the point at a speed faster than the shear wave speed. Like this, you create what we call the supersonic push, and you create on a Mach cone a very strong shear wave that results from the interference of all the shear wave you have created point by point. When you have this, you have this kind of movie. Here, it is just an ultrasonic image with a very low contrast, and you see here an inclusion. When you just look ultrasound, the bulk modulus does not change too much, and you don't see anything. But now, if you send the shear wave, you see that the speed change, and if locally you measure the speed of the shear wave, you have a new information, which is the shear modulus map, or the shear wave velocity. You obtain a very nice quantitative image in kilopascal of the stiffness of the uh, medium, and you see that the image has the spatial resolution of ultrasound, one speckled grain, but it has the contrast of shear wave, which is interesting for the doctor. Now, on breast, it's very interesting because you can have a lot of specificity, and all this free breast uh, tumor image has very different specificity. This one gives very high stiffness, and this is malignant. Uh, we have made a lot of study of this, uh, and there was a, a long study on many cases that show that you improve strongly the specificity of breast cancer diagnosis with this technique. Not only you can apply this for breast cancer diagnostic, but 
to follow, for example, breast chemotherapy uh, month after month, and you can really see on the shear modulus the evolution of the stiffness of tissue, but you can apply this to many other kinds of cancer, liver. You can, of course, if you measure the stiffness, learn better carotid plaque stiffness. On prostate, you have the same uh, interest for stiffness, and you have many example of this, especially because you are, we are very fast, we can measure elasticity many times in one cycle. That is to say we can follow pulsatility and we can see how uh, muscles are changing their stiffness during time. Now, before leaving, I just want to show you another example of ultra-fast imaging. With ultra-fast imaging, you can also do Doppler processing, not to measure a shear wave propagating, but just to follow blood flow by doing Doppler processing. And now you have something very interesting, is if you use conventional ultrasound imaging by doing Doppler, you have a very poor sensitivity to blood flow because you have no time to spend on each pixel because of the uh, uh, recurrence of your imaging process. But if you do the ultra-fast Doppler, you can obtain 10,000 frame per second, and each pixel on the image, you can compare it many times to do a Doppler process. And for example, on a rat brain, in vivo, if you put your probe, you see practically nothing for power Doppler on the brain with conventional Doppler imaging, but with ultra-fast Doppler, suddenly you see all the cortical uh, and all the vascularity with a very good precision. Now, what is interesting is that it is so fast that you can do this uh, to follow the dynamic of any events in your brain. For example, if you inject a toxin, you create an epileptic seizure, and here you see an image, it is not an image, it's a movie, of a blood volume uh, that change, and you have a very good temporal resolution, 0.2 seconds, and you have a very good spatial resolution. This opens completely new perspective for functional imaging with ultrasound, uh, which is not comparable to MRI and to optics, but which is quite interesting. Just to conclude, multi-wave imaging is quite interesting. Uh, I have shown you that ultrasound can be used to follow shear wave. Of course, you can think of using OCT, uh, ultra-fast OCT, to monitor shear wave propagation and to make elasticity image with micron resolution instead of 100 microns. And if you do very fast OCT with Doppler, you can imagine also to do functional imaging on the brain. Of course, it will be not on the same depth that ultrasound, but this will be quite interesting also. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much.